What type of Asian men are the most toxic? This Australian TikToker is going viral for making this list and ranking them, and we're here to talk about whether we agree or disagree. Yeah, this list is going viral right now. Joining us to discuss whether we agree or disagree with each ranking is Nelly Nell Chan all the way from LA. Glad to be here talking about toxicity as that is in my nature. <laughs> Is it in your nature or are you just accused of being toxic? Man, I've been accused of being toxic so much in my life that I might as well embrace it. <laughs> well, it's good to have some toxic Asian male representation on the board today. You know, that gives us more of a different perspective. Andrew, uh, let's run the clip. Today, we're ranking Asian men from least toxic to most toxic. Let's preface this with that all men and all male toxicity is all to do with their ego and how they choose to express that. Let's start with the bottom, Chinese. Their ego is built through business and status. So you know, they're just busy building businesses and status. It's not so toxic to deal with. Second, which is equally as untoxic, are Japanese. Japanese men, their ego is just built on honor, stability. Maybe they're a bit quiet in that to date, but you know, not so toxic. Around this area are Indonesians, Malaysians, most of them are busy just trying to live a good life. And let's go on the other side. Then let's kick it off right here with the Koreans. Their ego is also through status and a feeling of significance, which sounds just like these guys. But the thing about these guys is they look all okay on the outside, but on the inside, crying and anger. And the number two spot we've got. Uh, this Chinese Filipino TikToker from Australia, I believe her name is Jamie, her channel is Fooligan Kevs, says that the expression of the male ego, Andrew, differs from Asian group to Asian group. And she like came up with a ranking from least toxic all the way to the most toxic. Obviously, Chinese was at the bottom. Wow, so Chinese are the least toxic men, she was saying. And she was saying, and the reasoning for this was because it was built, the ego was built more on business status and money, not so much maybe like, I guess, masculinity or desiring uh, women, you know what I mean? Like being manipulative to women, right? It's not as, not as often. Yeah, I would agree with this. Uh, Nell, as a toxic Chinese guy, or I guess, according to this chart, the rare toxic Chinese guy, would you agree with this? I agree with it to a certain extent, a majority of it. Uh, you know, I think Chinese people, or especially guys, are more, you know, money-driven or success-driven where they focus a lot of their time and energy on trying to be successful or trying to make the most money. They don't really got the time to focus on how to, you know, manipulate girls or try to be toxic to girls. I think they just want to kind of focus on being good to themselves. And you know what I think is really unique about Chinese guys, Andrew, is that they only just care about the amount of money in the bank and like their raw liquidity and capital assets. Yeah. It is not necessarily about the flash. I know some of the new mainland Chinese guys yeah, yeah. are a little bit different, For sure. like running counter to this trend. But Hey, I saw this funny comment. It said, hey, yes, being Chinese, I agree. Girls date us Chinese dudes, especially us Canto Chinese, because we're the safest bet. Damn. Now, how the specific Canto. are we going to say that Cantonese guys Guys of them all might be the least toxic oh. and the least focused on being flashy, being manipulative, being like egotistical. You're going to say, guys, these are just stereotypes, archetypes, categorizations, whatever you want to say, generalizations, that Fujinese guys are going to be more toxic than Cantonese guys. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. The yeah, that's, right? yeah. that's the stereotype, right? That's the stereotype. However, Andrew, this next comment said, yeah, but bro, why are you so happy about that? Girls actually like... Toxicity, especially when women are young and still hot. <laughs> no, agree or disagree with this. That does have some truth to it. Some girls seek a toxic guy because to them it seems more fun, you know, more, uh, you know, more uh, exciting, you know, you and, know, and they, they get to they, like, tame. they get this challenge to be able to like change or tame this toxic guy You're talking and about turn him to a good guy. You a know? young girl, let's just throw it out there, an ABG who is a bottle girl. She might be looking for a toxic guy. Yeah. So I guess in this case, Andrew, if you if you're like a Chinese guy who wants that, then you're like, all of a sudden, man, I'm on the low end of the toxicity ranking. Maybe I need to up it. Like I said, guys, not everybody thinks being toxic is bad. And so these are just stereotypes and generalizations. Obviously, there are plenty of toxic Chinese guys, but there's also just so many Chinese guys. Period. Uh, moving on, Andrew, she had Japanese coming in at number two least toxic. She said, most Japanese care about honor and stability. <laughs> and they are very quiet and polite and would be making up a good guy to date. All right, here's my thing. In Australia, unless she's very well-traveled, um, Aust the, the, the Australian Japanese population is only point. 3% of the population. So I feel like she's more basing it off of like the international 
kind of generalization of Japanese men. Right, which, like from Japan, right? Yeah, which I would say generally, though, is considered very patriarchal, but also very polite and quiet and proper in many ways. However, they do expect certain like patriarchal, like hierarchical uh, structures. Yeah, it's really difficult to understand unless you go to Japan and you spend a lot of time their level of patriarchy and their level, I guess, of some people also say herbivoreness, it's a very stark contrast. It's almost like kind of difficult to explain. You kind of got to go there. Nell, do you have any commentary on uh, Japan being second least toxic to uh, Chinese? I think I, I kind of agree with Japanese being down there. Uh, I don't really know a lot of toxic Japanese guys. Just like you guys mentioned, they are very, you know, honorable. They're nice. They're polite. Um, I can see know. their stats for their older generations being way different, though. I think that theirs is like kind of mm. depending on age range. Moving Toxic, on. Toxic but honorable. Mm. Mm. Moving on, she has Indonesian, Malaysian, and Thai. She says, most Indonesian, Malaysian, and Thai people are just busy trying to live a good life, survive, live a simple life. That does not leave a lot of time for them to be toxic. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I actually, so I think it's funny because like Australia is a lot closer to Southeast Asia. So even talking about Malaysian and Indonesian guys is even more common. Like, you know, in the populations in America are not that large. No, people in America yeah. do not even know what these countries are. That's, yeah, why. They, so the majority that's why I feel like this list went viral because you really broke it down into like some of the more minority, you know, ethnicities that, right. you know, that don't really get talked about a lot. Yeah, yeah I would say, uh, I guess... It's hard, the sample size. I'm not who, sure who she's talking about, but I guess a lot of the Malaysians and Indonesians that you meet overseas, like in America, are like Chinese Indonesians or Chinese Malaysians. So right, maybe right. Chinese Thai, to be honest. sometimes some of their Chinese-ness is even keeping them lower on the toxicity level. I yeah, don't know. But, you know, to the same point, they also have a couple high-profile guys that I don't know if he was toxic or not, but what was Joe Lo from Malaysia where he embezzled $5 billion just to be cool? Oh, J-Ho Lo. Yeah. Wow. But you could say if J.O. Lowe was better looking and more toxic, Andrew, he wouldn't have needed to embezzle $5 billion to yeah. live that high value, high leverage life. Uh, moving on, Andrew, this gets to the point, the middle point of the video where she goes, these groups of people are like above average in terms of male toxicity. And the first group she put was Koreans. And she said <laughs> because they need status and they really need the desire to feel significant. However, she also pointed out that the Korean male ego is very fragile and underlying their cool, tough exterior is a lot of crying and anger. <laughs> she went in. That was pretty now, deep. She, she, she on point on that. Like a lot of Korean guys, you know, their ego is like, you know, up there and they try to like perceive it and try to withstand it to be like, you know, that's like their pride, you know? But, you know Koreans but, are very and, prideful. And don't be triggered, guys. I know the Korean internet, they're going to be triggered by that comment. But is it, I heard a lot of my Korean friends say this about Koreans too, but it's different when it's like in the family outside. Is, the is it understandable <laughs> that their egos are a little bit higher than like a Chinese male ego? You know, like with everything going on, they got all the cool wave, they're wavy by, you know, they got the music and the, the dramas behind yeah, them. Yeah, I would say that Korean guys try a lot harder to be conventionally masculine or cool but then i guess if something breaks that there mm. also could be hurt but like for example a chinese guy you can't be hurt by your pursuit to be masculine if you never really try to be yeah, masculine. they don't care yeah, yeah they really don't, don't care. care you're just like man nothing even matters to me um i guess andrew is this a good place to be or a bad place to be i'd say like a lot of korean guys it's kind of like a middle zone that fits really well with america i'm not saying having a fragile male ego or wanting to be hyper masculine is good or bad but it seems like it fits in with how america already is yeah i i understand i do think america is a country of egos and i think it's a country where you can flex your ego and that is very accepted right and sometimes i'll be honest having an ego having a chip on your shoulder however you want to describe it it can drive you to go do a lot of things. It drives a lot of Koreans to go put themselves out there, to be musicians, to try to look good, to try to be cool. And if you do, if a lot of you try to be cool, then the image of the Koreans like gets goes higher. Right, it does, right, it is right. cooler. Like yeah. I said, there's pros and cons to the pursuit of anything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what are you motivated by? What is the outcomes? Is it better to be uncool or viewed as uncool and secure? Or is it better to be cool? and insecure. Mm. Uh, moving on, we uh, she goes to Viet, Cambo, and Laos, moving up the toxicity scale. She says that these men are motivated by money, significance, notoriety, and they want to get money, and they do not care if how they get it is legal. <laughs> 
That last line is crazy. What a line. But <laughs> I got to say, because, you know, I don't want to comment on this myself. I'm just going to use comments from the Jackfruit thread where she said, where uh, this guy said, she's right about Viet Lao and Campbell's, man. Legal or illegal, we get that paper. Money is money. Hey, it, his name is Flip626. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we let the people talk for themselves, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, like I said, man, people come from certain types of situations and certain family situations and certain... You know, things yeah. and people try to get it out of mud however they can. By right? the way, I do think in Sydney, she does hang out with like a lot of Viets and Filipinos and, and Southeast Asians. In, in, if you watch her videos, I look through her videos. Hey, by the way, I'm a fan of her rap. She can kind of flow. Yeah. So <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun. better than a she lot of She raps about fun and cool stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah. Be, it's better than a lot of Asian rappers out there. Well, it's a, she's a woman and she gets to rap about women. So it's cool. It, it sounds good. <laughs> I actually think that that's why she had such an interesting perspective because no dude would ever break this down because it's just like, yo, I don't even want to think about this as a dude thinking about other dudes yeah. too much. But she is, I believe, uh, like, you know, like LGBT and is a girl in Australia. So she's like thinking about uh, it in a different way. Yeah. Also, I think she hangs around a lot of dudes. Yeah. So she kind of like observes men from the outside, I guess. Moving on to the last but not least, Andrew, she put Filipinos as the most toxic Asian males and saying that uh, Filipinos really value love and attention from women uh, with as their worth. Right. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I guess, I don't know. What did the comments say? Uh, the comments were, hey guys, like I said, I don't make these stereotypes up. Somebody said, yeah, we're number one. And someone said, yo man, I carried the whole toxicity train here in Arizona. That was me. And somebody said, hey man, first place is first place. I can't disagree. Which Asian is the most toxic? Vietnamese men. Why? Because the majority of Asian boys are men. Are, are, are men. Are Vietnamese men. What ethnicity are you? Japanese. Which Asian is the most toxic? Uh, I say Viet. Why? I just past experiences. What ethnicity are you? Chinese. Which Asian is the most toxic? I personally think all men are toxic, but Filipinos and Viet's for sure. Why? I'm Viet, so I've had my fair share of Viet men. Them. Filipinos. You too, you break my heart. Oh, some girl said, yeah, I can't disagree. Too many bad experiences with my own kind, which w explains why my guy is Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, man, what do you think of the Filipino ranking at number one? I think Filipinos are like one of the most least Asian ethnicities. You know, in terms of they like to have fun, they like to party, they like to be, you know, in least a way, Confucian, a little for wild, sure, yeah. you know? And not necessarily it's a bad thing, uh, but, you know, in terms of toxicity in, in partnership, I feel like, like you said, they really crave love a lot. So, like, if they don't get it, they have to do what they have to to, like, you know, get it. Yeah. Right? So, you know, they I mean, go I would above say, and beyond. I would say this growing up and even in probably my later years, the guys who I knew were the best around women or the who got the most attention from women or who could talk to women the best of all the Asians were Filipino guys. Yeah. Right? They were the most suave. They had the most swag. We all know this. This is true. Like, this is generally true in most, like, Asian areas. Like, the Filipino guys, they're, they they can date, like, Latina, and they're okay, they, that's very okay with them as much as dating, like, yeah. other I, Asians, right? I got a cool Filipino friend, and his younger brother is, like, I guess not as good-looking or as tall, has, like... Um, it's not the best looking dude, Andrew. He has like a country white wife. And you know, he doesn't even really care about getting money that much. But I'm saying clearly, f even with like limited tools, he's getting attention from women. So it goes to show you what you focus on oftentimes is what you achieve. Right. So obviously as a Chinese guy, I don't really know if it's Filipino, Korean or Viet or like any of those top three can they be interchangeable depending on your experiences? So some women are going to say, oh my gosh, Korean guys are the most toxic. Some women are going to say Chinese guys are most toxic because I got done wrong by a couple Chinese guys, right? So it's all going to be based on your personal experience. But of course, I think we're all basing these hilarious rankings based off of like general cultural traits. I think general pattern, shared characteristics, guys. Um, this Hawaiian guy who's a mix of a bunch of different Asians came in the comment section and said, I hate this categorization. It only divides us. Every group has every type of guy in it. Uh, so he was kind of coming from the fact that he was a mix of a bunch of different Asians. He didn't like segmenting them out. I understand his sentiment, but obviously the truth is there are predominant patterns, right? People in Seattle eat salmon. In LA, they eat tacos. In Omaha, Nebraska, they eat steaks. In New York, they eat pizza. You know, growing up in Seattle, Andrew, I knew some people who did not touch seafood, but that doesn't change the fact that Seattle 
is known for eating salmon, right? Mm-hmm. Right. There, I think there's just a higher percent. We're just talking about percentages here. First of all, I think even if you believe these rankings are true, it doesn't mean that it's not a close race, too. Yeah. You know, maybe they're only separated by three to five percent, but you could say, all right, well, that's the five percent. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Is the middle the best? Because if guys want to be toxic because that shows some sort of high leverage, even though, you know, the misuse of it, you could argue is moral or immoral. Mm -hmm. Is it bad to be on either extreme end of this spectrum or is it good? Obviously, a lot of the Filipino comments, to be honest, they were kind of happy where they were at because that, you know, they shows that they got the swag, right? All right, let me just say this and then you guys give your pick. I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, being around where the Japanese fall. You know, you're respected. Japanese are respected as a culture, okay? And they're not considered that toxic. I'm cool with that. And then, you know, but they're still kind of cool. And they're happy. Like, it seems like it. I (laughs) guess, does it seem like the ability to be toxic also has some correlation with how cool that group is viewed? Yeah. I mean, they probably don't care about that at all. So they, they probably focus on being, you know, trying to be Japanese, trying to be the best in everything else. Right, right. Right. That's their culture. Hey, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. It was just a funny video from an Australian TikToker, but some interesting thoughts. Um, let us know what you think in the comment section below. What, let us know what you think of our analysis. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.